Hello, hello, Mario here with again a new video. Today we were talking about things you might not know about climate change. CO2 absorbs radiation, uh, infrared radiation. If you look at this picture, you'll see on the left the sun radiates uh, energy, light to our at atmosphere. Part of this uh, light is reflected uh, before it enters the uh, the atmosphere and on the right you see uh, back radiation infrared back radiation uh, when it is dark at night um, the solar energy that has warmed uh, our planet the soil and the air and partially uh, the water, the seas, uh, and so on. This uh, heat is released in the form of uh, infrared radiation. So when CO2 in the atmosphere absorbs this radiation, it does not freely travel back into space. So this is what, what the greenhouse effect is about. Greenhouse effect is an issue. Here you see a simple explanation about CO2. CO2 is heavier than air, denser than air. So if you uh, pour, let's say, uh, a can of CO2 into this box with three candles of different length, and the CO2 only covers the shortest candle, the shortest candle will stop to burn. This is a sort of experimental proof that CO2 is heavier than air. So what happens? It will stick to the surface and it won't go uh, high up in the atmosphere. So remember this. This is important knowledge. So the second thing is CO2 is heavier than air. CO2 is mixed into the lower atmosphere due to wind thermics and uh, all kinds of motions in the atmosphere but it has the tendency to stick to the surface to let's say the first few hundred meters in the atmosphere co2 causes short-term heating or flash heating so our culture emits a lot of co2 in the atmosphere and this CO2 sticks um, close to the surface and because CO2 absorbs infrared back radiation at night our lower atmosphere starts to warm very little bit but this very little bit has large consequences for the global climate. There is a clear trend between um, increasing CO2 in the atmosphere due to human activity and the climbing temperatures, the trend of climbing tr temperatures. And there are a lot of people who say it isn't true that CO2 causes climate change. Mm. And mostly this is based upon pretty biased ideas they have because it is an established scientific fact that CO2 absorbs infrared energy, infrared light. And this has um, consequences for our climate if we emit large amount of CO2 in the atmosphere. That is simple science, but there is much, much more to climate change than meets the eye. Here you see over the last one and a half century how CO2 emissions increased due to industrialization. It boomed and this booming CO2 has effect on our climate. But the science around climate change is mm, pretty dubious. There are models there are predictions, 
where our climate will go in the next, in the coming century. For example, if our CO2 emissions would remain constant, it would uh, climate change would follow the orange line, and every growth would have effect on climate change, and it will affect climate change. And the models show a little variability, so it is expected that the temperatures of the atmosphere will increase between one half degree up to around two degrees and that is pretty worrying well this graph this is the whole point what uh, science has done and what most people have done is connecting uh, human emitted co2 with the ice ages as as if it is one thing for example if science says CO2 causes climate change, then opponents of this idea say, but what caused um, the climate to change over the last few ice ages, like in this graph, because there were no humans around, they always say. The mistake here is that human emitted CO2 is connected as one thing to this ice age graph because I will show you we cannot connect this. This graph shows um, how CO2 and temperatures in the ice cores of Antarctica follow each other. The blue line are temperatures, the green line are CO2 levels and the red line is dust in the atmosphere. You see a clear uh, correlation between the lagging of CO2 and temperatures. So CO2 peaks between 300 to 1000 years on the peak of temperature. So CO2 lags and this is the problem because lagging means it is an effect and not a cause. So the CO2 levels in this graph are lagging on the temperatures. And this is crucial to, to grasp because you are looking at an cause effect graph temperatures are the cause and co2 are the effect this is a very interesting graph the upper graph are the temperatures high in the atmosphere and the graph below are the temperatures on ground level so what is happening the temperatures on ground level are climbing over the last 50 years and the temperatures high in the atmosphere are dropping over the last 50 years. And you might notice these yellow bands on the left. The scales are not the same. So the scale of temperature on the upper graph are double of the scale of the graph below. And this is important to know. Then, before I get back to more about this graph, I will show you first um, the lagging, because lagging is always important in every graph where you see correlations in and peaks of different entities. Then the lag, because the horizontal axis, the x-axis, this is time, uh, lagging is always important because the thing that goes first is the cause and the, the thing that peaks uh, after that is the effect and that is the lagging time always important to understand this whatever you study so we have here if we look at this upper graph you have three eruptions Agung, El Chichon and Pinatubo three pretty large volcano eruptions over the last 50 years and you see there is no real correlation in the troposphere on surface level you don't see climate, uh, the temperatures dropping or peaking. But if you look at the upper graph, the temperatures are clearly peaking. So it's, they go up. So, so there is an eruption. There is little particles in the atmosphere, in the higher atmosphere. 
and temperatures are peaking. Why is that? I think it is very simple because these little particles absorb solar energy high in the atmosphere. And you would expect that due to this absorption there would be a drop in temperature on the lower atmosphere, but this is not visible in the graph. You can see that eruptions on ground level have effect on the temperatures in the higher atmosphere. They go up. I overlaid two different graphs, so the graphs of the temperatures and the graphs of El Niño and La Niña. When I overlay El Niño and La Niña graph over the stratospheric temperatures, there is not a clear correlation between El Niño and La Niña and the temperatures in the stratosphere, but there is a clear correlation between El Niño and La Niña and the temperatures on ground level. They clearly follow each other. There are sometimes little trend breaks, but this could be caused by solar activity. There is a clear correlation between El Niño and La Niña and climate change for the troposphere and the ground level. The surface level temperatures are climbing and the temperatures in of the stratosphere, the higher atmosphere, are dropping. And the scales, again, I say this again, the scales on the y-axis are not the same. There is a clear negative coupling by CO2 in the stratosphere and a clear positive coupling by CO2 in the troposphere. And altogether, when we sum up this result, you see this um, calculation, stratosphere cooling, this minus one stands for the negative coupling, so the temperatures go down, minus one times 1.6, and this 1.6 is the temperature drop over the last 50 years, times 0.35. And what the hell is this 0.35? And here you see, this is the weight of the stratosphere. The stratosphere is much thinner, and because it is much thinner than the troposphere, it just weighs 35% of the whole atmosphere. But because the stratosphere is cooling much more, 1.6 degrees, this total results in minus 0 0.56 degrees temperature drop over the last 50 years. And then the troposphere warming, that's plus 1, because it is positive coupling, so the temperatures go, go up, times 0 0.8, this is the temperature rise over the last 50 years, times this 0 0.65. And this 0 0.65, this is the weight of the troposphere. It is 65%. And when we add these two together, because the stratosphere and the troposphere are basically 100% of the weight of the whole atmosphere, this is minus 0 0.04 over the last 54 years and this is equal to zero. So the troposphere plus the stratosphere are in equilibrium. We suspect that the atmosphere has always been in equilibrium. Geology studies temperature change by taking rock samples. They are only studying changes in the troposphere while neglecting the stratosphere. Okay, I think this is enough for today because it is already a pretty long video and I hope to see you back soon also on our Patreon page where you can read much more on this topic but also on the topic of earth crust deformations and the catastrophes that struck humanity in the past. It's not to say you must be prepared in 2020. I will not claim this. Nevertheless, um, it's always good to know what happened in our ancient past. So thank you and bye-bye.